Final segment is here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked On Sports Atlanta. Lots to get to here uh, in this final segment. Uh, we got a quick bit of Falcons news I want to get to. Plus, uh, the Braves start their second half tonight. Of course, make sure you tune into our Braves postcast right after uh, the Braves game ends right here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. But first, we have to get to a shovel of wisdom. Brace yourselves because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. Yeah, you know how we do it. Every day people say and do stupid things. Uh, we are here to reward them with a shovel right upside the head. Today, my shovel goes to Caitlin McClure. Okay, Caitlin McClure, you probably don't know the name, but if you've seen this story, well, Caitlin McClure, a 32-year-old woman from New Jersey, um, who uh, basically put on social media that a veteran, homeless veteran who was down on his luck, um, handed her his last $20 bill to help her fill up her tank with gas after she ran out of gas in the middle of the night. She and her then-boyfriend, Mark D'Amico, started a GoFundMe page to raise funds for the down-on-his-luck veteran. Uh, John Bob was his name. Uh, yeah, that's a win, by the way, um, if it's real. Anyway, so um, 14,000 people contributed to the cause in the following weeks. Well, yeah, it was a hoax. Um, the couple met Bob in a month before she claimed uh, and, and they, that Jackson had handed over his last 20 uh, or that Bob had handed over his last 22 um, to Caitlin McClure. Uh, while he was panhandling on her underpass. Well, McClure fabricated the entire story to help donors pay it forward. Yeah, they did. They paid it forward in big-time ways. Um, hundreds of thousands of dollars even went their way. In fact, nearly $400,000. Well, Caitlin McClure um, only gave Bob, it, according to the court deposition, uh, about $75,000. So uh, Bob, D'Amico, and McClure uh, were all sentenced in Burlington County, New Jersey, to prison because, well, don't create internet scams. Don't do that. You're an idiot. You're going to get caught. Like, the, the internet's forever. It remembers everything. It knows everything. Like, don't do that. You look like a real idiot. Not fun. Prison isn't fun. She's got to pay restitution. And, yeah, of course, she accepted some sort of plea deal. But, yeah, and also don't use homeless veterans either. That's bad. bad. But, you know, anyway. Uh, speaking of homeless, or it's going to be more like teamless here uh, shortly, uh, the Atlanta Falcons officially placed linebacker Deion Jones on the pup list. You know, the physically unable to perform list. Uh, he underwent offseason shoulder surgery. He's now been put on the pup list. Uh, this is the guy with the highest salary cap number on the team at $20 million for the year. Now, again, we have heard the rumors of Deion Jones' future being somewhat uh, in Atlanta and Falcons uniform limited, as they should be. Because uh, he's not very good. But that said, uh, I don't know when this is going to happen. I don't expect him to be on the team. And I think, honestly, uh, if they, when it comes to making the final 53, they'll probably cut him. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, look, he could stay on the physically unable to perform list. He gets paid no matter what. The Falcons are going to pay him no matter what um, because his money is, is guaranteed. So uh, it, 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 it's no real skin off. Deion Jones back one way or another, what really happens. But uh, if this is not a guy that's going to help your team contribute and win, then maybe it's time to look uh, to send him somewhere else if anybody wants him. And if right now nobody's coming calling because I think they all know the Falcons are going to part ways with him. Uh, unless it becomes a need, unless it becomes a need, somebody gets hurt as soon as training camp starts. That's, I mean, nobody's wishing for that, but the Falcons are kind of wishing for that. They're kind of wishing that somebody will come along and get hurt and they need a linebacker and they'll trade a seventh round pick, a sixth round pick, any any round pick for Deion Jones to take him off the Falcons' hands, uh, or at least some cap relief if they really needed it, one way or another. All right, time for a wake up call here, real quick, from our good friends at Coffee AM. Guys, I tell you about them every day. Why? Because I drink the coffee every single day. Uh, it is absolutely the best tasting coffee that you can have. Coffee AM is an Atlanta based small batch coffee roaster. That just makes some of the best coffee you'll ever eat. Freshest coffee you can get. Why? Because most of the coffees that they have are roasted and shipped the same day or close to it. It's right here in your backyard in Georgia. They only roast current crop specialty grade coffee. When I say coffees from around the world, I mean like Kenya, Sumatra, Brazilian rainforest coffee. Like I don't even know how they get this stuff. 
but it all is phenomenal. Uh, it is great, and you guys should try it. Huge selection again, office from all over the world. Organic, fair trade, direct trade, expertly crafted blends, espressos, flavored coffees, gourmet teas, and more roasted right here in your backyard. Go to coffeeam.com backslash locked on today to take a full look at their menus of coffees, teas, and gift sets. That's coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Use the coupon code locked on at checkout to get 15% off your first order of coffees, teas, and gift sets. Coffee AM, the best small batch coffee roaster in America. All right, uh, let's get to the Atlanta Braves here. We were going to start the second half on a very high note, well, at least on a business high note. I should say more of Liberty Media is happy about this necessarily than the Braves are. But as they open up this series here with the Angels, um, advanced ticket sales show that the Braves will return to Truist Park from the All-Star break Friday night on the cusp of surpassing 2 million in home attendance already. It looks like it's going to be reached on Saturday night, uh, the middle game of the Inter League series against the Angels. So. Um, yeah, it looks like all three games of this weekend are going to be a sellout, um, as did 24 to 51 games before the break. And eh, this is what winning a world series does, man. It puts butts in the seats. And so, yeah, uh, this is a good thing for the Braves. It's a great ballpark. Uh, hopefully now on a side note, major league baseball, will get off their keister and return an all-star game back here to Truist Park after the chicanery that they pulled, uh, two years ago. I don't want to get into it. If you disagree with me, I don't care. It was crap. It was junk. Uh, and and anybody saying otherwise is not being objectively factual about how things went down. That said, an all-star game should be coming to Truist Park here very, very soon. Uh, and should not be made to wait. Speaking of waiting, uh, Braves fans can't wait to see Shirley Otani. But I'm sure that Charlie Morton is okay. This is a big start for Charlie Morton here after the break. First one out of the shoot, it's Morton on the mound against Shohei Otani. Uh, and Morton in his last start got roughed up. And he's been, you know, he had, a, he had a stretch there of three or four starts that were really good. But for the most part, he's been inconsistent. He's got a 4-5-4 ERA on the year. Um, you know, he's given up uh, 87 hits in 99 innings along with 37 walks. So he's got a whip that's up there. And um, this year he has been sort of uh, – I, he's been slightly better at home than on the road uh, in certain categories, but in others, not so much. Um, he's certainly been a lot worse at night this year than he has during the day. So starting during the day, his ERA at night is 5.1. His ERA during the day is 3.8. So make of that what you will. But this is a tough Angels lineup. Otani, Trout, and more. Uh, and this is a start for me that I'm going to look at Charlie Morton and go, how quickly can he get right and this will sort of, again, help to detail what Alex Anthopoulos needs to do at the at the all I'm sorry, at the trade deadline, rather, not the All-Star trade. Right? Oh, that passed. At the trade deadline to see if he needs to go acquire more starting pitching. Morton's going to get two more turns probably before he has to make a decision, maybe three. I mean, Morton has got to pitch better. So I think this is a big start. I think a good start tonight could give him a whole boatload of confidence going forward. And, and I'm hopeful that that's what he's going to do. I'm hopeful that that's where this is going to end up with Morton uh, returning the form. If he doesn't, there are some questions to answer and how much more you're going to continue to have faith in him, especially as you're trying to get into a pennant race down the stretch. Remember, we talked about the schedule all this week. It's a big deal. It's a big deal to have consistent starters. Now, again, the Braves score a lot of runs, so Morton doesn't have to be great to get W's. He's just got to be good. But you can't get rocked around like you did in this last start. And you can't give away games to bad teams like the Angels. For as much as their lineup is good, you know, Tane is special, and Trout is a forever MVP, um, that's a losing team overall for a reason. And the Braves should take advantage. Make sure you guys check out the Braves post desk tonight after the Braves game. That'll do it for me here on this Friday. It has been a great week. Appreciate you guys always checking out A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. And certainly appreciate all the love for the Locked On Sports Atlanta Network. Thank you guys for being part of everything we do. Back on Monday, you guys have a great weekend. Don't forget to grab anybody.